after a couple of miles, Whitewell. So, this is where I take my leave. Lovely to meet you. And you. Thanks. Great. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Francis and Liz are on their way, but we're taking a detour into the deepest past. First, though, we just need to negotiate these rather splendid stepping stones, which I hope aren't too slippy. Made it. On the far side, local archaeology lecturer Rick Peterson. Hi, Rick. Hi, Stuart. Hi. How, uh, how long have these stepping stones been here? Well, the stones themselves are quite new, but there's been a crossing here for a long, long time. This was a medieval deer park, so we know that people were hunting in this landscape hundreds of years ago, but the archaeological work we've done in this landscape, particularly on this farm, has shown that people were living in and hunting around here six, seven thousand years ago. Wow. So there's a long, continuous history. Long time. In the hills above the river and the farm, evidence of those people. Rick takes me to the Fairy Holds Cave. So here it is. Wow. How far does it go back? Well, if I just shine that torch down there, you can see. Oh, I see. Can you see how far it's going? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, that and does goes it widen in, out? It is goes it... out about 18 metres beyond where we are now. It opens out into a big chamber. Um, wow, but God. Which is cool from the caving point of view. Yeah. It doesn't actually have any archaeology in it. Um, oh. What it will have at this time of year is hibernating bats. So I think perhaps we should, um, we should not go any Fair deeper. Enough. <laughs> Fair enough. So people lived in this cave, did they? Well, they didn't live in it as far as we know. That was, that's one of the theories about use of caves at particular periods. But um, in the period we're interested in, in the early Bronze Age, this was used as a burial site. So just behind where you're standing now right. um, was um, when this site was excavated first in the 1940s, there was a dry stone wall about where I'm stood here. Really? Yeah, and another one about there, across the entrance. Yeah. And there was a little space in here, which was the burial point. Right. So in that burial place was a burial urn and the cremated remains of what we now know were two people in there, um, an adult and a child. This is the cremated <gasps> remains of people. So you can see characteristic of the cremated bone is this the, the style of fracture, so that's a bit of a long bone that's, that's split in the heat and popped out as it was being cremated. God. Now, in the 40s, they didn't recognise the human bone. They just found the pot, and they, that's why they thought it was a house or a, living, a yeah. living cave. But when we came back and looked at it, we established that they were human bone. Do we know whether there would have been a family or anything? Um, we could potentially tell that if we had a bit better preservation. The problem with cremations is that they do get rid of quite a lot of evidence. Yeah. But if you're dealing with a single burial in one pot, of an adult and a child, then the logical conclusion is that it's a family. It's a family. Yeah.